Uh, so um, Colt asked me this um, off air, which is a really good question, actually, because I've got quite a contrasting view to virtually everyone I speak to online, especially in the carnivore space. Um, so, I mean, I've been on a carnivore diet now for three years and, well, no, three, four months at this point. I had a three, four month gap where I went off and went off the rails and binge ate and just was rubbish, basically. I was pretty useless and just eating crap, um, to say the least. So I'm probably quite fat adapted in that sense. Um, and that's with the absence of plant-based foods. So I've eaten very little fruits or vegetables in the last few years. Like I think I've had fruit twice in the last nine, 10 months. Um, vegetables, you know, the seasonings are things I sometimes have, but not very often. Um, and basically what I'm getting at is the less plants you have in your system, the less chances are for you to have issues such as leaky gut or in include foods which are in your diet, which are um, laden in anti-nutrients. Now, a lot of anti-nutrients such as tannins, lectins, uh, even gluten, phytates, oxalates, they can leach um, particular minerals from your, your body. So not just the ones that you actually digest and eat, but the ones that are actually in your body inherently. So what you'll find with people in the keto community, where they're including plants still, um, they're still not quite made that step yet to the carnivore diet. Um, you know, each their own sort of thing. They'll include the electrolyte uh, products and they'll benefit from it. That's because they're putting more in their system because they're lacking so much from their system. So my argument is rather than try to add more and more into your body, why not increase the uptake of those individual electrolytes and minerals in your system from the food you're eating? So the way you maximize the uptake is getting rid of the plants that could be problematic to you. Um, you don't drink too much. So you drink enough to stay hydrated, but not too much. Um, you salt your food to taste. I think, um, I think Colt kind of mentioned that a little bit earlier. And that will help balance things out. Um, the other thing as well is when you're eating a lot of meat in particular, especially more fresher and less dry-aged meat. You have a higher concentration of taurine in it. And taurine is the main electrolyte regulator of the body. So that it means it's going to regulate that particular, uh, I think it's like, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, like 1, 10, 5 balance or whatever it is, you're between sodium, no, it's not that. You know, um, think Colt will remind me. I think it's 2, 1. I, 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 yeah, so uh, Robert Sykes. what it is. Yes, yeah, so Robert Sykes recommends uh, two to one. So I just have been rolling with that, and I'm never like you know treating it as gospel, but just kind of use it as a ballpark starting point, and then assess yeah. whether it, any either of those levels need to go up or down at all. That's right. Yeah. So um, you can almost get away of putting more salt into your diet, um, but probably not less. Salt will also regulate your electrolyte balance. Um, so how do we know this is true? And I'm not just talking at my my backside, basically is that I've been having in my diet around 2,000 milligrams of potassium each day since I started the carnivore diet. So 2,000 milligrams. And with that 2,000 milligrams of potassium, I've had 200 milligrams of magnesium, and that's through diet alone. Now, sometimes I'll occasionally take a magnesium citrate tablet at night, not often. Um, that's more so if I've had constipation from painkiller medication that I have to occasionally use. But outside of that, I've not really added anything to my diet in terms of electrolytes in that time. But what I have had in my diet is lots of taurine through the meat I eat. Um, and I salt to taste and the body regulates itself just fine. Um, and the volume of my gut is less, less than what it used to be. So, um, for example, right now next to me in my bed, just down here, I'm sat on the bed sort of thing. I've got a cup of water. Um, I think it's got some taurine in it, which is good for bed sort of thing. It helps regulate GABA. Um, now, I'll probably only drink about a quarter of that tonight. That's over the whole night. Um, I wake up in the morning, I'd be a little bit thirsty, but not overly thirsty. And during the day, I'm also only drinking two litres total, and that will include milk, ice if I have it, water, sugar-free squash, or whatever I happen to have that, have that day. Um, so I'm having about two litres per day of, like, actual liquid, you know, because I'm very fast adapted at this point. You know, I can flick between different um, states quite readily, so I don't have the same dip a lot of people have in the gym, so my training performance is equal to, if not better than, when I was having carbohydrates in my diet. So I think as people become more fat adapted, they require less minerals in a system. Um, the uptake's better. There's less junk going through a system to reduce the uptake. And you can become more intuitive with your body as you understand how much sodium you need and how much water you need to drink. Um, and I, whilst Robert Sykes is correct about the ratio, 
Um, your body does regulate that ratio, assuming that you put the right stuff in and listen to your body. So yeah, that's kind of my standpoint, which is a bit, it's different to both of you, what you guys think, but um, that's basically it. That's probably the most brilliant 10 minutes that we've, that we've had on this show, bro. Is that last time? I, mm. Wow. I mean, no, seriously, that's spectacular. That makes so much sense. Um, the oxalates stripping you of, of your minerals. Okay, great. Got it. Uh, do things like sucralose and artificial sweeteners fall into that category? Like would that, would that kind of offset your electrolyte balance there too? They can do. So the way that would work is if your microbiome is upset. So for example, we know that some people have a higher intolerance ability to um my stepdad he can't have saccharin in his diet um i deal with sucralose just fine now if i have uh, erythritol or any of the alcohol sugars that really upsets my guts then i'll suddenly be really thirsty so my guts will actually get rid of more electrolytes in them um yeah so yeah. there's it comes more from the standpoint that if your gut's healthy then your electrolyte bounce will be healthy and you're putting the right nourishment in Okay, so for this, yeah. so for this gentleman being new to the carnivore diet, like, you, you, do you think it would be wise? He, he's been eating carbs his entire life, and so do you think that um, it would be it would be wise to continue to recommend the way that I have been recommending it to him, and then, um, and then, and then after, and then after a few weeks, like after he comes back for another console a month or two later, just just say, you know what, how do you feel about how do you feel about cutting back on your electrolytes and um, and and, and seeing if see if we, seeing if we can, um, I don't know, I. I you know, re re revisit this co conversation and kind of go more with your intuitive approach. I like that a lot. I love it. Yeah, I'd probably um, reduce them slowly. Don't go cold turkey. Um, if he goes and reduces them, then a week later he starts to panic and starts feeling a bit off. His heart's racing. He feels weaker in the gym. Then at that point, you might add in taurine as a supplement instead because um, that is naturally occurring. It's not going to stress the kidneys. It's not going to potentially throw anything else off because your body will regulate its assimilation um it's a uh, more natural in terms of putting something in your body to deal with better um so i'd probably add in taurine at that point cool um, taurine is just like cbd can't overdo it got it <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah pretty 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 much this is not a medical claim but yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah super helpful thanks bro cool um is that it for questions on your side Colt? oh um I, I guess one, one more thing, just to piggyback off of that. Okay, so if you were gonna, so if you were gonna peak, for, so you, Jonathan, if you were gonna, if you were gonna peak for a show now, and do and do a refeed, would you, would you increase your, would would would, would you would you have like a higher fat, higher protein meal or whatever, and increase water and um and and your um, electrolyte levels all in direct proportion? Um, that's a good question. Yeah, so I'd increase my fat. Um. So say, for example, the show was on Saturday, I'd increase the fat. Maybe it's quite individual. So I couldn't say like without testing it myself I mean, prior weeks, but I might increase the fat, say Monday or Tuesday. Um, so, so I might add in 50%. Reassess the look in the physique. Is the physique full or is it still quite flat? Um, it's important to recognize full versus flat or if someone actually has no muscle on them. So I know people before have been supposedly flat, but they just have no muscle. Um, so is that sort of indicator to look at? The next thing would be to follow the hunger signals that your body provides. So if you're storing more glycogen, um, is in your the fat that you're you're taking in is actually being held within the muscle a bit more. So it will go downstream to create more muscle glycogen if you are in a depleted state anyway. Um we know that because how else do we feel all our workouts, you know, with it's fat essentially. Um so then at that point, I think, okay, well, it's still quite flat, you know, keep it 25% raised again the next day. If that next day is still flat, you know, nothing's changing, I might increase to 50%. Um, but that point, your first would usually go up because when you store more glycogen, your course, we know glycogen, one gram of glucose to three grams of water or something like that. So, you know, your, your first will go up. Um, you'll know that straight away. Your salt will probably also go up as well to help take in the extra nourishment, um, hydration. Um, then you'd assess the look. So you'd look at the skin feel, so the texture. Is that person getting fat or is there, they get that like um, shrink wrap look? You know, you just taper it from then. Um, so you just try and keep it the same. It's very hard to get fat in a few days. Um, very hard, especially if you're in a ketogenic state. I think one of the biggest things I'm learning for you, from, from you, bro, has been to take things one step at a time instead of trying to plan everything out and follow it exactly like it is on paper because of what makes the most sense. Um, 
you know, cause for, for me, for me, this last, for me, this last, this last show, and I was like, all right, I've never done a ketogenic bodybuilding show before, but all the shows have, have always been on carbs. So I was like, this, this is, this is new territory. And I need to follow exactly what I'm doing. And I think I, um, and you know, reading Robert's book really changed my life, but, um, I'm all, but I'm also a very OCD person that, um, I think, I think, I think I've had to mature past that a bit. Um, and learning from you and Mark has helped me to be able to take things one take things once one step at a time instead of rushing in with um with with, with an agenda already because right because right now I'm thinking of a practical situation which is going to be Mark's upcoming show right and so should we so should we go in there with a with with a set protocol of okay we're 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 going to pee you exactly like this on this day and exactly like that on that day but I'm I'm I'm, I'm liking this idea a lot better now of um of taking it one meal at a time and say, okay, how do you, how do you feel after this meal? How do you feel after increasing your water? How do you feel after increasing your sodium? Um, yeah. Tell me what do you, you know, tell me what are you craving? I think those are probably the more kind of conversations we need to have on peak week, huh? Instead of, okay, mm-hmm. bro, Monday, this is what your diet looks like. And then Friday, this is exactly what we're doing. That's, that, that's, exactly, that sounds yeah. like how most people ruin the physique that they already got in the first place. Because even back when yeah. my coach was coaching me through all these different, like we we did rapid backloading, we did, uh, did um, intentionally spilling over on Wednesday, which is kind of what we found out worked best for me with carbs was to intentionally spill over on Wednesday before the show, and then just keep it top, and then just keep it topped off, and then by Friday you're 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 cleaned up, and then you're good and full without any spillover by by that point. But I mean, it's it's just different for every single person. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. We have. Um bodies that are innately very biologically dynamic you know it's good to have a plan because i've seen your post cult on instagram i can see you know by this week you're going to aim for this and it's good to have an idea you know assuming things are trending the way they are but things always happen um you'll notice with mark's prep as it gets leaner you'll have to do some pretty weird drastic things which it's very true with um someone when they're first starting getting into shape um now as you do more competitions you become more predictable in a way um not always but you can understand what's going to happen as time goes on. Um, yeah, you'll you'll have a great time, and I think it'll be a learning curve for all of us. Um, be able to see what Mark can do on stage and see how he progresses as weeks go on.